Earlier this week, the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Somolu, slashed by 50% uh, transportation fares on public buses, including the BRT, lag ride, taxi scheme, ferry services, and first mile and last mile buses. And it comes as Nigerians continue to deal with cash and fuel scarcity. Here's the governor. But for us to further question the effects of what our citizens are currently facing, I've directed immediately that from tomorrow, on all of our Lagos run bus system, all of our BRT buses, on all of our lag ride taxis, all of our ferry um, um, boats, and all of our last mile buses and, 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 um, and small buses that we have in the state, that they should be carrying passengers at 50% of the current fare. And this will continue to happen using their carry card. And we want to further make the carry card available to all willing citizens. We have about 3 million carry cards that are out there that have been used, but we believe that we'll even make it a lot more available. And so for the next one week, on all of the passenger routes within all of our buses and our ferries and our taxis, passengers will enjoy a 50% um, discount from tomorrow morning all right, very interesting stuff here. We have the CEO of uh, Touch and Pay Technologies, Mr. Olamide Afolabi, which of course is the uh, brainchild, the, the parent of Kauri Cars. You're very welcome. Good morning Thank to you. you. For me. So they say that. Uh, how does the saying go again? That in every crisis, there's a there's an opportunity. Is this the crisis that has birthed the opportunity for your tech to 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 be uh, displayed by the governor there to everyone else? Oh, well, interestingly, we've been in Lagos State for the past two years. I two mean, years. Yes, working in helping the BR the first and last mile, the ferry service to you know facilitate payments and provide revenue assurance for the stakeholders. Yeah. So basically, um, this is just one of the fancy or let me say good um, things that came out from you know digitizing the process. Yeah. So the government can just come and say, hey, we want to do a, a, a slashing call. I mean, and everybody knows that this is going to happen because it's a payment system. You just need to tap and you're, good, you're going to get the exact fare that the governor has said. So nobody is going to be worried that, oh, some people will carry the, the fare a bit higher than what the governor have said. Yeah. But the, the government now have the power to regulate everything mm. and make sure that um, everybody is satisfied. Yeah, yeah, you can't get a bigger um, endorsement than from the governor himself. How does this thing work? How does it work? Is this I mean, explain it to us? How does it work? Essentially, like the um, Oyster Card in the UK where um, people can go to any mom and pop shop. We have agents at every terminal. Um, they just need to get the card. They then they top it up. They load money on it. And instead of paying cash, they just start to pay on the buses. Mm. And we have handheld devices that have been given to um, first and um, to first and last mile people, yeah. to agents on the streets that can actually help people top up their card. Mm. So they can load it with cash money, and then they can just you know go and tap without even bothering. Or Wait, so, about but there's, there's no pictures of the owner of the card on the card, right? Yes. So if there's no picture, what about the security? What about you know? safety of the car if it gets lost or you know how, how what's the safety features okay so every card is a, is a contactless card is a is a uh, micro transaction card so meaning that um, we don't expect people to put hundred thousand to fifty thousand on the card okay because it's specifically for transit and you know other micro transactions or utility transactions mm. so um so it's not there is a pin there but based on the transaction that is happening we don't ask for pin because transport is supposed to be you know fast mm. So what we have instead is actually um, when people lose their card, mm -hmm. they can um, request for the card to be blocked and then they can then transfer the balance of that card into another card, a right. new card. Ah, okay. Yeah. So is this based on QR code tech? Is that, is that, what, is that the foundation for this here or, or no? How, what, what are we working with here? It sounds like it's QR codes. <laughs> yeah, so we have, um, we adopted any easy to use technology. Yeah. So the carry card is primarily contactless. Mm. That's um, NFC, near field communication. Um, the QR code part of it is for people that have smartphones. So the whole idea is that if you have a smartphone, you can just load up your carry wallet, mm -hmm. and instead of tapping the card, you can just scan your the QR code generated from your app to make payments. So people that have smartphones don't need the card at all to do transactions. But the primary technology behind the carry card 
is NFC, near field communication. It's a subset of RFID, uh, radio frequency identification technology uh -huh. that is used in uh, hotel doors that is now on most of our ATM cards today. All right, something that keeps coming up Network. In fact, it, network is almost a pejorative here in this country. Yes. When you hear the word network, you think of something negative. Exactly. <laughs> so, so what about the network? I take. I mean, this, this does depend on the internet, does it not? I mean, how, explain to us. How? What about that? And then what about network issues in case a payment doesn't go through? What? What? How's that? How are you getting around that? <laughs> not exactly. So basically, okay. the technology works offline. Uh -huh. So the card is a store value card. I mean, okay. there's value really sitting on the card. So meaning that if you tap your card, we are not debiting from online. We are debiting from the card. Because so, it's been loaded already with exactly, the funds. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. So if there's okay. no network, you can still go. Whenever there is network, then the transaction can sync and then the operator or the merchant can then get their value. Okay. So the issue currently happening in Nigeria about cash doesn't affect. This one, it just works. <laughs> what was the process like getting the Lagos State government on board? Because you said you've been in this market now for a couple of years. Yes. What, what was that process like? What's it like to pitch a government? Did you, did you, did you do the PowerPoint presentation in front of Governor Son Olu where you sit and ask you, how, how did that work out? Oh, yes, yes. So you we did had give a, a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> we had a presentation with the ex school, mm -hmm. ex school members of Lagos State. Yeah. Um, we're given some time to show the technology and then they asked all their questions, we're able to answer that. And then even at that, we were have we had to do um, so we went we, we partnered with Lamata, okay, which is a legal regulatory harm of Metropolitan Transport of Lagos State. Okay. And then together we went to the state and then we did the presentation and then we still had to run a pilot. Uh -huh, uh, to test it out. To test it out. Yeah. And it was only when the state was satisfied with the pilot that they then give us an agreement to say, oh, okay, this seems like something that can work. So everything we've been doing, we've been doing together with, you know, the Lamata body, which is the regulatory arm of Lagos State. And then um, we've been, um, you know, listening to them, anything they ask us to do, whatever tweak, which is an advantage of, you know, working with a local company because yeah. the reality of Lagos State is so different. Okay, so we man. needed to quickly, you know, tweak something, make something happen. So Lamata give us that mandate and then we, we just do it. So um, I, I want to ask you, but I think we might be, coming up on a, on a break real quick but um as far as are you only getting feedback from the government or are you also getting user feedback how's that how's that channel feed that communication channel working out yes so we get most of the feedback from actually the users because beyond the fact that um the state government endorses this they also want the customers to be happy the state government wants the users to be happy so what we do is that we ensure that um the users are happy so whenever users are disgruntled, so whenever they send message on Twitter, on Facebook, anywhere, we take it personally and then we review it and we make sure that all their questions are answered and all their uh, requests are, are done. So we, we, the users are the most important people to us. Yeah. Then the secondary users are then, you know, of course, the state, because this is also for them. Yeah. So it's an initiative that, you know, the government put forward because of Lagosians. Great stuff. Okay, now I'm absolutely dying to ask you this next question about fuel because yes. it's naira scarcity on one side. All right, we talked about that as far as transportation and that, but I want to ask you about fuel. Let's listen to the governor. The governor also, I mean, so, I mean, the governor talked about reducing transportation by 50%. He talked about setting up food banks. Then he talked about fuel and he said that the Lagos state government is prepared to protect fuel stations that are willing to sell fuel 24 seven. Let's hear what he had to say. Thank you. Also, you remember that we have agreed with them to commence 24-hour fuel sales at various petrol stations that want to have a 24-hour circuit. And so the protections have been set out at various fuel stations and there's the ability for them to sell fuel round the clock. We believe these measures will see remarkable improvements in the next couple of days. All right. Now, this, and, and okay. W when he announced this, I got to thinking. Um, for the states to say it wants to protect fuel stations who want to sell through the night, of course, yeah, late in the night, there's safety issues, right? What about self-service fuel pumps where one a human a person can just drive to a fuel pump and uh you know fill, fill up their own tank and then pay for it right then and there without an attendant and is 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 that i you know can your tech be 
integrated into that somehow. We're talking before the show. Apparently, you guys, no, there's no new idea under the sun. So apparently, <laughs> you're ready. So, so tell me, so this is already in the works. Yes. So there's a company called E Pumps. Um, e Pump. E Pump. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They have a product called Remy System Solutions. Remy. All right. And um, you know, they have over six thousand stations right now, um, where they've put um, a, a technology that is integrated into the pumps, and people can actually do self. Um, well, they can self for so themselves. This is what we're looking at right now. Exactly. Yes? Okay. Exactly. So what we are doing now is that we are integrating the Kauri card into this technology. Yeah. And then um, we are going to be having a dedicated pump for self-service. Okay. So the whole idea is that if you have your Kauri card, you can go in and then you can just you know pay and then you can dispense and it will dispense only the amount what of fuel that you for. paid for. Yeah. So once it is done, the fuel will stop dispensing. So yeah. you can't even cheat the, the system. system. So we we ha we have started thinking about that. We started working together uh, and to and we are open to working together with any stakeholders that can make this bigger and better and more convenient for people. What if so I, we've been talking about this I mean, I've, off air with other I've talked about this you know prior to this. So what if there's fuel like we don't want fuel scarcity, <laughs> right? <laughs> but what if there's fuel scarcity then uh, you know with what's been happening that means it almost be like it 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 they won't it won't work it will not dispense anything. Yes. Right. Basically. Um, now with respect to the stakeholders, when you say you want stakeholders to chime in, this of course will be the downstream players, yes. right? Everybody who is in the downstream sector. Yes. But. Okay, so the fear, we've been talking about artificial intelligence and the fear of technology. It seems like every time we talk about technological advancement, there is always a fear of losing jobs. The question has now come up, do we need fuel attendants? Do you need somebody there who you give money to, to pump your own fuel that you can use your own two hands to do? Is there an inevitability about if other downstream sector, downstream players come in and adopt this, then... We don't really, we don't need fuel attendants. Yeah, well, sadly, yes, um, because human beings are supposed to be more strategic yeah. and they are not supposed to be mechanical. I mean, when I say mechanical, is doing a repetitive task. Right. We are supposed to be able to just think, input something into a system and let machine take over. Yeah. And then eventually we start thinking about other, developing other systems like that. Um, but because, you know, we have a lot of issues that we need to deal with as, you know, the category of com country that we have, we had to put people there so that they can make ends meet. Mm. So as technology is taking over some jobs, it's creating opportunity for all that, all that jobs. Yeah. For example, the Kauri ecosystem has employed over 10,000 people, okay. where we have um, you know, people now investing in more buses, and drivers are driving them. We have agents selling to people and all that. So we think that this is also going to create a new set of jobs mm. for people, because more, more mom and pop shops can then be a point for people to load. We can have cashless loading. We can have a lot of you know, very interesting and strategic thinking in terms of different um, job creation that will come out of this. So if, okay, we've, you've seen, let me go back to the Naira scarcity issue. And, you know, um, I think, who was it? One of the, the, um, the regulator, uh, NMDPRA, I believe, came out saying that they will sanction any fuel station that tells people not to pay with the POS, that they yeah. have to go and get cash. And then, you know, that POS, you know, this, this, what do you make of the, um, what tech can do to alleviate what we've seen with the Naira scarcity issue and people migrating over to electronic channels? Yeah. So interestingly, if you go to the West, for example, you even go to a store and then they tell you, they write it boldly there, that cash is not accepted. Right. You can't even pay cash. Right. So, and I think that when you digitize cash, you are able, the government and, you know, uh, stakeholders are able, able to do a lot more enforcement. Mm. They are able to track, they are able to, people can't legally say they kidnap you and then they ask you for ransom because right. there's no cash anyway. Right. So there's a lot more advantage in having a cashless environment than, but, you know, the problem is that we need to um, hold people by the hands to get there. Yeah. Uh, there are so many things we can leapfrog as a country, but there are some things that we can leapfrog because they are cultural. Yeah. So I think that once the government find a way to successfully break the cultural need for cash, then we'll be able to get people to that point where they don't even think about cash anymore. Mm. They, they think about um, currency in the more digital sector. And I don't think it's more about enforcement. It's about the culture of the people. We still spray Naira in this country as a culture. Yeah. <laughs> so why will you now say there's no more cash? Right. Uh, because people, you take away that prestige of spraying money. Mm. And even the headlights, you know, they spray money. Right. So, so, so it's a cultural thing and it's something that the government needs to be more tactical about yeah. um, to really get us to that point. You know, it's funny. 
you mentioned spraying. We had a clip ages ago where in India uh, there was a wedding and they sprayed digital money on the couple. So the people would take their phones and scan a QR code and then do this just for <laughs> fancy stuff. So so maybe we get there where we can yeah, spray digital okay. money. At, <laughs> digital money at weddings. I have to ask you about the elections. Okay. We're two weeks away from the elections. And this tech again, you can, so you can see this is the thing, when, when you've got new technology, it's got so many applications, right? Yes. We've talked, you know, POM, we've talked buses, we've talked fuel stations, elections. Now, uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna ask you, you know, you're, you're, you're a tech guy, so I'm gonna go ask you about the tech side. The PVCs, yes. the card readers, the whole aspect of putting it inside, the BVAS yeah. and all of that, can what you're doing be applied, so to speak, to make, I guess, identifying and uh, you know people who are voting more seamless is there any way yes yeah, so the technology behind our payments instrument is available for everybody i mean there are so many use cases for the technology and i think that the contactless technology will make the election verification process a lot more easier yeah where people they don't need to be in section they don't need to be in sam card they don't be you know, all those issues where people can just go with their probably the Afrigo card, the new card that you know, yeah, the from domestic the, from card. And the exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It already has our name, it already has so many information uh -huh. about us. We can just tap it yeah. and then it, it, it does Pops the up with your information. Exactly. So because we just need to have um, uh, an handshake between different MDAs in the government. Right. And then they call the NIN to verify. There's no need for any PVC anymore. So yeah, people, anybody so we get buy. rid of PVCs. Exactly. And people can just go ahead and pay. So I, I mean sorry. And votes. And votes. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, and so and so wait. If I, let me let me take this back now. If I go back to my question to you about the internet yes. and the whole network stuff, yes. because there was this issue in was it Oshun State and Beavers, not the back end server and da 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 da. In the same way that. For carry card, you load money onto a card and then yes. it's almost if it's verified with the machine when you go through you yes. can load the data of a voter exactly on their card. On the card, yes, on the Afrigo, yes. which has all the NIN and everything. Yes. And even if there's no internet, yes, you can verify. You tap card. it and you verify the voter. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> That's where we need to get to. Ah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so easy in principle, but like you said, you gotta get the handshake. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Really quickly, before we go, um, what's your outlook for the tech sector uh, for Nigeria? I mean, it's exciting, right? Yeah. There's, 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 there's so many opportunities. How do you feel? You feel, you feel bullish? You feel optimistic? What, what are we looking yeah, at? I mean, I feel very optimistic. And I think that, like you said, when we started, wherever there is opportunity, and wherever there's problem, yeah, there's, there's an, opportunity. an opportunity. right? And if you look at the way Nigeria and the kind of blessing of um, venture funds that are flowing to Nigeria, yeah. $6 billion dollars last year it's a whole lot um you realize that we we have a lot of um, very interesting opportunity to be able to um, transform the tech ecosystem so i'm very excited i feel that um, there's more to come mm. and there'll be a lot of improvement and i believe that whoever the next president is there's going, they are going to work more with the tech sector to transform and automate a lot more um sectors in in the country Look, it's it's exciting stuff. It's just, and Nigeria is at the forefront of this. Brilliant people like yourself putting this together. Olamide Afolabi, uh, CEO of Touch and Pay Technologies. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Appreciate your time.